this deadly day where 13 U.S. service members were killed. China is currently the hottest country on Earth. The nuclear fusion that occurs at the sun's core has inspired scientists to develop a nuclear reactor. This artificial sun was made by subjecting electrically charged gas or plasma to temperatures of 216 and 288 million degrees Fahrenheit for a total of 101 and 20 seconds, respectively. This is 10 times hotter than the center of the sun, where temperatures reach 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. That's quite sizzling. So what is this about? According to Peter Ducey of Fox News, this indicates that China has created an atmosphere with temperatures and pressures equivalent to those of the sun. The secret race for an artificial sun and limitless energy has begun. Does the ability to virtually construct a sun on Earth indicate that scientists can replicate the sun's ability to provide unlimited energy? Come with us as we explore China's newly launched artificial sun and the profound implications it has for the future of the energy industry. Our sun's center is a nuclear furnace that generates unimaginable heat and pressure due to the sun's enormous mass and gravitational pull. As a result, two forms of hydrogen are fused together at an incomprehensible level of pressure. The reaction produces light and heat, two of the most important factors in maintaining life on Earth, and also releases helium as a byproduct. Once again, the possibility of achieving commercial fusion within the next decade is within reach of humanity. While fusion holds great promise, its development would have far-reaching consequences for the fossil fuel energy sector worldwide, especially in countries that are heavily reliant on petroleum. Once we figured out how to use fission to break apart atoms, sun-like fusion became the ultimate goal of every physicist working in the field. Hydrogen bombs were developed as a result of this effort. They were never used in combat, but they may have been 1,000 times more powerful than the atomic bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Fusion doesn't result in radioactive waste like fission, which is employed in current nuclear power plants. Heavy water and irradiated lithium provide easy access to the hydrogen isotopes it needs. Nuclear weapons utilize the highly radioactive isotope uranium-235, which takes 703.8 million years to decay by 50% and another equivalent period of time to lose the remaining 25%. Governments face enormous challenges because of this, and secure storage is next to impossible. For instance, one plan put out by the United States proposes burying nuclear waste in the Yucca Desert. Although the waste may be contained in lead-lined steel barrels, it would still be radioactive hundreds or thousands of years after the drums deteriorated. Radiation causes cancer and genetic mutations, hence fusion is the best nuclear energy option. Because it does not contribute to global warming, fusion is seen by experts as a green, infinite energy source. In contrast to keeping the chain reaction going continuously to power large cities, triggering fusion for a fraction of a second is quite simple. However, fusion is a challenging process. Creating fusion that can last, even if it happens spontaneously under the sun, is challenging. It appears straightforward on paper, split some atoms and drink in the power. But in reality, it's considerably more difficult to create something that can function like a sun. The sun is approximately 1,300,000,000 times larger than our planet. Earth could never sustain the kind of gravity produced by the sun's mass. Second, the sun's core is a stellar oven where hydrogen fusion occurs at a blistering 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. The issue for scientists on Earth is not just in producing the pressure and heat needed to fuse hydrogen, but also in containing it. Therefore, magnetic fields are used to maintain its inert state. It's not as easy as it seems to do that. Research, testing, and continual trial and error are required to find the optimal conditions for containing turbulent molten plasma at high pressure and subject to heat in the millions of degrees Fahrenheit needed for fusion. The quantity of energy poured into the process is staggering. Scientists are striving hard to get a net energy gain from fusion in order to bring it to the commercial market. This is an ambitious goal. Since the gravity of Earth is so much weaker than that of the Sun, 
scientists have to crank up the heat to make up for the difference, which wastes more energy. Fusion reactors on Earth require temperatures of several hundred million degrees Fahrenheit, rather than the 27 million degrees Fahrenheit provided by the Sun. Higher temperatures necessitate more power to achieve fusion since greater magnetic containment is needed. However, with the advent of AI for data analysis, the process by which scientists labor to advance reactors is shifting. It takes a long time to interpret the results of a physics experiment and determine what went wrong. Learning the optimal fusion circumstances is now considerably quicker because of neural networks' lightning-fast inferences, short experiment turnaround, and steep learning curve. Scientists and engineers have already done the bulk of the work. There was a million-fold increase in reactor density, temperature, and overall operating duration between 1950 and 2000. According to experts, we only need a doubling of this triple product to generate more power than our reactors consume. A nuclear chain reaction is started by subjecting enriched uranium to a barrage of neutrons. More than 50 years have passed since these plants were opened. For example, the USSR launched the world's first commercial nuclear power plant in 1954. However, as the Chernobyl series demonstrated, they are not risk-free. Unpredictable domino effects are one possibility. Although the results would be disastrous, this is an extremely rare occurrence. Nuclear fission can be problematic since it produces waste that can be radioactive for decades. In contrast, an artificial sun could one day provide a safe and nearly waste-free means of producing energy. Its potential effectiveness in combating climate change is enhanced by its minimal carbon footprint. How do we accomplish this? Under extreme conditions of pressure and heat, two smaller nuclei can fuse together to form a larger, denser nucleus. Because the resultant nucleus is lighter than the sum of its constituent parts, energy is also released during this process. One liter of salt water contains enough deuterium to generate as much energy as 300 liters of oil. Artificial sun fuel typically consists of the isotopes deuterium and tritium. Seawater is a good source of deuterium, while lithium is used to produce tritium. When compared to uranium, both elements can be thought of as infinitely plentiful. Deuterium in seawater, for instance, has the potential to generate as much energy as 300 liters of oil. A few grams of fuel can yield one terajoule, which is enough to meet the energy needs of one person in a developed country for six years. This is just a rough estimate of the energy released in a fusion process. Hydrogen bombs are just one example of how nuclear fusion may be a double-edged weapon. However, when used responsibly, it has many benefits. To generate the same amount of energy as 9 million pounds of fossil fuels, only one pound of fusion fuel would be needed. It's the wave of the future since it doesn't pollute the environment with radioactive waste as traditional nuclear plants do. Fusion energy is the ultimate goal of the nuclear power industry, and it's easy to see why. It's easier said than done, though, to harness fusion power. The initial hopes of researchers in the 1950s were disappointed by the immensity of the technological issues involved, such as maintaining temperatures at over 180 million degrees Fahrenheit and controlling the complex behavior of plasma, which holds the atomic nuclei to be fused. You may recall from your high school physics textbooks that positively charged atomic nuclei repel each other due to their opposite electric charges. Close proximity between nuclei is required for pairs to overcome their mutual repulsion and combine. Over the course of billions of years, the sun and other stars generate light and heat by compressing hydrogen atoms to temperatures approaching 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. Nuclear fusion requires pressures and temperatures considerably above 180 million degrees Fahrenheit, which is impossible to achieve on Earth. No wonder even the most sophisticated fusion reactors use more energy than they produce, hardly enough to run a tiny cycle lamp bulb. So physicists thought that the best approach to harness stellar power would be to utilize enormous fusion reactors to confine plasma in a magnetic field and cause the atomic nuclei to fuse. That's only a portion of the issue, too. Once such high temperatures are achieved, they must be kept up over a considerable period of time before any useful energy can be produced. We've established that extreme heat and pressure are required, 
The fuel gets so hot that it essentially becomes plasma. For the nuclear attraction force to triumph over the electrical repulsion, the atoms must meet at temperatures of at least 180 million degrees Fahrenheit and at pressures high enough to bring them close enough together. To make a crude parallel, it would be like gluing together two magnets that repel each other because of their same polarity. These severe conditions are created by focusing magnetic fields and strong laser beams on the fuel. After reaching the ultra-hot plasma state, the fuel must be continuously fed while keeping the high heat emission under control to prevent the reactor from being destroyed. Naturally, nothing can survive temperatures of 180 million degrees Fahrenheit. Different kinds of reactors are used to achieve plasma confinement for this purpose. Tokamax, which are donut-shaped chambers where gigantic magnetic rings capture the superhot plasma and spin the charged particles around to fuse at extremely high temperatures, have been the focus of scientists' efforts for years. The larger the tokamak, the more energy it can generate since the confined fusion particles will be kept warm for longer. Unfortunately, no current method, no matter how advanced, has been able to keep these temperatures up for long enough to initiate fusion processes. Thus, the success of China's experimental advanced superconducting tokamak, EAST, can be considered a major technological advance. Since it employs the same energy source as our nearest star, scientists have dubbed it the artificial sun. This is an extremely exciting development in science. The artificial sun, powered by a Russian-designed reactor, was activated for the first time by China on December 4, 2020. China is among the 36 countries working on the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, ITER, but it is still in a race against the rest of the world to develop a commercially viable fusion reactor. May 2021 saw the announcement that the HL2M reactor at the Southwestern Institute of Physics, SWIP, in Chengdu, China, has successfully completed nuclear fusion tests, shattering all previous records. Since fusion has been accomplished by a number of reactors in recent years, getting there is not the largest issue. Sustaining it for more than a few seconds is quite difficult. The SWIPE team has succeeded, whereas others have failed by maintaining temperatures of 216 million Fahrenheit for 101 seconds. Records are being broken. The French Tor Supra Tokamak, which had a plasma duration of 6.5 minutes in 2003, was the previous record holder before EAST. In 2016, the Korea Superconducting Tokamak Advanced Research KSR reactor in South Korea maintained a temperature of 90 million Fahrenheit for 70 seconds, setting a new world record. For 30 seconds in 2016, the artificial sun at the Korea Superconducting Tokamak Advanced Research Reactor reached temperatures of over 180 million degrees Fahrenheit. Because of hardware constraints, the reaction had to be halted after 30 seconds. In order to make nuclear fusion power a reality, Kastar employs magnetic fields to create and maintain extremely hot plasma. Yong Su Na, a member of the Kastar research team, has stated that further improvements to the gadget should allow for even longer periods. A limitless supply of clean energy that, if harnessed properly, might revolutionize how we power our lives. This is an exciting achievement for good reason. To achieve fusion energy, we need technologies that will allow for continuous operation of plasma at 180 million degrees Fahrenheit. When the star is able to keep its plasma at a high temperature for 20 seconds, it will be a major step toward ensuring the technology necessary for the long, high-performance operation that will be essential to any eventual commercial nuclear fusion reactor. The star's internal transport barrier ITB modes were upgraded, which was a crucial factor in making the jump to 20 seconds. Though scientists don't yet have a complete understanding of them, containment and stability in nuclear fusion reactions are aided by these modes. Unlike nuclear fission, which breaks atomic nuclei apart, as is done in power plants, the K-Star is a tokamak-style reactor, like the one that went online in China, fusing them to create enormous amounts of energy. The K-Star fusion reactor is a fusion device that uses hydrogen isotopes to generate a plasma state in which ions and electrons are separated, ready to be heated. This mimics the fusion events that occur on the sun. 
keeping temperatures high enough for long enough to make the technology practical has proven difficult so far. Nuclear fusion is promising as a clean energy source because it can run on nothing more than seawater, a supply of hydrogen isotopes, and generate almost no waste, but scientists will need to break more records like this before it can be used commercially. Although there is still a lot of work to be done, progress has been encouraging in getting these reactors to produce more energy than they use. By 2025, Star's developers want to have achieved temperatures of over 180 million degrees Fahrenheit for more than 300 seconds. Anyway, in 2021, East surpassed Kastar's record by maintaining a temperature of roughly 216 million degrees Fahrenheit for 101 seconds, setting yet another record. The real temperature at the sun's core is closer to 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. As a result, more environmentally friendly power sources will become available. There are no byproducts of nuclear fusion, such as radioactive or greenhouse gases. It's expensive to work on its processes, but it's going to be well worth it. It's part of a collaborative effort in France to build the largest nuclear reactor ever, and it's called the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or ITR. In addition to China, 35 other countries are involved in the initiative as well. These countries include the European Union as a whole, the United Kingdom, India, and the United States. According to investigation, the magnet within ITER can generate a magnetic field 280,000 times stronger than Earth's own field. By 2025, the world's fusion reactor should highly probably be operational, but China isn't stopping at east. By the early 2030s, the country hopes to have finished building a new tokamak fusion device. Yes, Beijing is hoping to build on its past achievements and make significant new advancements in the industry. The engineering test reactor, CFETR, the company's next-generation artificial sun, will begin operations in 2035. How likely is it that India will build its own fusion reactor in response to China's artificial sun? Since India plays such a crucial part in the ITER, it could be a surprise contender in this race. Industrial manufacture of the ITER's essential components, such as the in-wall shielding, cooling water system, and cryogenics, is being overseen by scientists from Ahmedabad's Institute of Plasma Research. In fact, Larsen and Tubro produces the reactor's primary equipment superstructure, where a vacuum is maintained to help cool the plasma. To address the on-off characteristic of ordinary tokamaks in heating plasma, India operates a state-of-the-art, steady-state superconducting tokamak, SST, that was built in the 1980s. These advanced state superconducting tokamaks have been created by only a select few nations. For instance, the ITR program helped cultivate the Chinese engineers who created the East tokamak, which is optimized for steady state operation. India might learn from China's example and use its involvement in the ITR as a stepping stone toward constructing its own fusion reactor in India within the next few decades. Fusion has the potential to radically alter our planet by rendering fossil fuels obsolete and lowering the cost of energy production. Fusion is a significant disruptor for nations whose main exports are petroleum products or liquefied natural gas. Despite fusion's potential, fossil fuels will continue to play a crucial role in powering machines around the world. The list of possibilities continues on. Several firms, including Princeton Satellite Systems, Helicity Space, and Pulsar Fusion, are seeking to use fusion to create new forms of propulsion. And NASA recently reported its relative success in creating fusion on a miniature scale, which it wants to use in space travel. Corporate interests are starting to pay close attention to the prospects of fusion as the worldwide race to make it a reality nears its finish line. According to Fusion Industry Association Executive Director Andrew Holland's estimations, Private fusion energy startups have received over $1.5 billion in funding. That doesn't even include officially supported initiatives. Jeff Bezos, Peter Thiel, and Bill Gates are also major proponents of fusion. The investment of strategic investors like legal and general and conventional fossil fuel energy firms like Equinor, ENI, and Chevron shows how seriously fusion is being considered. Our modern period is on the cusp of a new era in the search for sustainable energy sources because of fusion. We will, of course, continue to make use of the sun we already have, with the help of technology like solar cells, even as this artificial sun becomes a reality. 
Solar power, together with wind power, is currently the strongest assurance of a move toward a more sustainable economic model. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.